other religions were assigned Christian churches to perform their worship services. Okay, this is where the uh, the, the scandal comes in. Mm -hmm. So the organizers of the event uh, made, in my opinion, a bad judgment call. Mm -hmm. And here is, I think, their, their number one mistake. So the plan was that these world leaders of different religions would gather together. There'd be a, a you know, a, a speech by Pope John Paul II, mm -hmm. and then they'd go into separate locations to pray. And some of these separate locations were pretty innocuous. Like uh, some people were put in, like in a town hall, others in a room in a monastery or a room in a convent, you know, a large area. But for some reason, uh, some of the groups were given churches to pray in. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that was uh, a bad judgment call on the part of the organizers. Mm -hmm. Um, because, you know, churches are holy places, they're consecrated for a purpose. And having another religion conduct their service in a consecrated Christian church, I think uh, it's not supposed to happen like that. And I think as well that it sends the wrong message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm pretty positive Pope John Paul II did not make this judgment call himself. He left this in the hands of the organizers. And this was organized by a few groups. Uh, one of the main ones, of course, was the... Um, the Vatican's, uh, was it the Council for Interreligious Dialogue? Mm -hmm. And there was also a group called the Saint, I want to say it's Egido. It's a different word for St. Giles uh, Society. Uh, they were one of the main promoters of this as well. And they had a role in organizing it, as did the Franciscans in Assisi. So for whatever reason, somebody made the call to allow non-Christian groups to use Christian churches to pray in. Uh, which again, I think that's what what led to many of the problems that came out of this. And we're going to see here the main one, and uh, we'll listen to his commentary, and then I'll give more background on what really happened. Okay. And to pray for peace. Buddhists prayed in the parish church of St. Peter. They placed a small statue of Buddha on the altar. And who are they praying to, these Buddhists? Okay, so a, a few points here. Uh, what he said actually was not completely correct. It was actually worse. They placed the statue of Buddha on top of the tabernacle. Mm-hmm. Now, let me first explain how that happened. Mm -hmm. So they were given this church to pray in, but it wasn't clear to them what the limits of their activity could be. All right. And without ill intention, they put a statue of Buddha on top of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Now, was the Eucharist in the tabernacle? I, I can't I can't say. I would assume it might have might have been. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a a practice you find in many places where, uh, in Europe, for example, if they're having a concert in a, a church, they usually will take the Blessed Sacrament out of the tabernacle. Not always, but often that happens. I don't know if that happened here or not. I don't know. Yeah. And I couldn't, I, I searched and I searched, I couldn't find anything on one way or the other. But either way, placing a statue of Buddha on top of the tabernacle is not wise by any stretch of the imagination. Sure. That being said, Nobody approved this. Uh, none of the Catholic organizers thought this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, I've read multiple accounts of, of what took place here. Most of them give the same narrative, which was um, the, the, the Buddhists took a statue of Buddha, put it on the tabernacle, and began praying. And as soon as that happened, one of the Franciscan priests there walked up to them, explained that this was inappropriate, and the Dalai Lama apologized and had it removed. It, it was only there a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. Most accounts say that. Now, there's another account going around that's very different that says that a Benedictine priest saw this, went up and said this needed to stop. And then the organizers uh, had the police violently remove him from the premises. Now, that narrative seems to be uh, put forth on sites that are very anti-Pope John Paul II or very anti-Catholic. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, I'm not sure I believe that, that story. Uh, the mm -hmm. one that makes more sense is the one that I've seen multiple places where as soon as this was witnessed, um, the Buddhists were told this was inappropriate, they apologized, and they took it off. Um, but you asked, who are they praying to? Who are they Correct. praying to? Right. All right. So he here's, let me give you um, 
let me give you some context here. So very often when, when Catholics uh, pray, sometimes they'll use the language, I'm praying to Mary, or I'm praying to St. Anthony. And Protestant Christians will hear that and think, oh my gosh, they're worshiping Mary, or they're worshiping St. Anthony. And that's because the word pray has come to take on different connotations in different religious traditions. Um, in Catholicism, we tend to use the older meaning of the word pray, which means simply to ask. So typically when a Catholic is praying, that means they're asking, they're, inter they're asking intercession from a saint. Uh, it doesn't always imply worship, but in Protestantism, the word pray has come to imply worship, which creates a lot of, a lot of confusion, right? So I want to be clear here. There may be some exceptions, but in general, Buddhists do not worship Buddha. Buddhists do not worship Buddha. As a matter of fact, they look to Buddha more like we look at a saint. Mm -hmm. They see him as an example. They see him as a model worth following, but they do not worship him as a god. As a matter of fact, on the question of God, of an all-powerful God, Buddhism is somewhat agnostic. They don't claim to have an answer on that. Uh, there may be a God, there may not be a God. They don't know, they don't claim to know. Um, so they do not worship Buddha as a God. So some might describe that as an idol of Buddha. I think a more accurate uh, description would be maybe uh, you know a religious statue, kind of like mm -hmm. a statue of Mary or a statue of another saint. That's how they would view it. They don't worship Buddha as a God. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sure that somebody is going to say in the comments, ah, but these were Tibetan Buddhists. Tibetan Buddhists are polytheistic. They worship gods. <clears throat> that is not entirely accurate. That's not, not entirely accurate. The reason people say that is if you look at the literature of the Tibetan Buddhists, mm -hmm. they sometimes use language to talk about different spiritual beings. And one of the words they use is often translated as gods. Mm -hmm. uh, but what they're really talking about are good spirits. And they also talk about devils, which are bad spirits. So mm -hmm. they're talking more along the lines of angels and demons. But the word they use in the Tibetan literature is oftentimes translated as gods. So people believe they're polytheistic. But if you really delve into the heart of uh, Tibetan Buddhism, uh, like other Buddhists, they do not worship these as gods in the same sense that Christians worship God. Rather, they venerate uh, holy people and they venerate angelic beings they see as protectors. Mm -hmm. So who are they praying to? Well, if you would ask the Dalai Lama, he would say, he would say he's praying to Buddha. Mm -hmm. But what he's doing is more akin to asking intercession than worshiping. Mm -hmm. now, yeah. Again, you can probably find some literature somewhere that translates what they're doing as worship. I mean, you can find all kinds of translations of different things. But you know, if you really get into the heart of Tibetan Buddhism, what's taking place here is more akin to a Catholic venerating Mary than it is to a Catholic worshiping God. Or asking Mary for her intercession. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But at any rate, what happened here was a terrible mistake, right? Mm -hmm. There should have been something put in place to stop this. Um, it, it was an oversight by the organizers. But again, it was a very, it, it was something that was only up long enough to get some good video footage of it mm -hmm. for purposes like this. Um, how long it was there, I can't find an exact account of how many minutes or hours. But most of the accounts I read said it was relatively quickly handled. Now, the Hindus were also present. Do they have any details of what was going on with them? Because they are, in fact, worshiping other deities. Right, right. The Hindus are, in fact, worshiping other deities. Mm -hmm. um, although, as a whole other story, if you go deep enough into Hinduism, they're not actually polytheists, they're pantheists. Mm -hmm. But what they're doing, they would describe as worshiping other deities, for sure, yes. Mm -hmm. um, were they given a church? Were they given another location? I could find no details on that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure where they were at. Maybe the video shows them, but I don't recall it doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yes, I, I think that it would be fair to say the Hindus were worshiping other deities. Mm -hmm. And see, that's what the problem is, to provide them a place to worship their false gods. That That's where I think there's an issue. Right, right. Um, now, again, them worshiping the false gods... Is it possible that without realizing it, they're giving worship to the true God? Maybe, maybe. But again, uh, I, I don't think it'd be appropriate to give them a Christian prayer space for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And even, even if they are, like, let's say that God hears their prayers because they somehow have invincible ignorance. It's not through their worship 
that any of this is answered. It's despite their worship and their ignorance that God would answer their prayer. It would be despite the false elements of their worship from a Christian mm -hmm. perspective. You know, from the Christian perspective, there are false elements to their worship. But the, the fact that they're they're reaching out towards a creator of some kind who they believe is benevolent and who has a power greater than them, to the extent that they're doing that, um, uh, perhaps there's some good that can come from that. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. God bless.